Stay connected to Larry Reed Live. Take a moment and like the Facebook page, subscribe to the YouTube page, and hit the bell. Text Larry Reed Live to 33222. That's the words, Larry Reed Live, no spaces, 233222, and get notified when we go live. Become a member of Patreon today by logging on to patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live. Download the Patreon app and turn on your notifications. Get connected today. This platform discusses any and all information that has been made known to the public in any way. Now, remember, if the information creates a conversation that needs to be had, then it could become a feature story on the LRL platform. Now, remember, I am not a journalist. I'm just a commentator. And all of the information in it, things shared, posted, or in a broadcast, or a caller that calls in, always assume that's the last gang got time for the, the more lawsuits I'm done. But the commentary is real. I want you to let not a doubt and everybody know that Larry Live is on right now. Let's go. Take them on right now. Hit like and hit share. Let everybody know that we are on. We have a very important and interesting guest with us on today. His name is Willie Moore Jr. Yeah, hanging out with Larry Reed live. And listen, he's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's my first time meeting him. Uh, yeah, you can't never believe what they say. <laughs> yeah. They, they just pay attention to the show and they don't really don't know me. But the yeah. people who got to know me, they know what's up. Man, listen, I'm so I'm so elated to be here with you, bro. Like, no cap. Like the moment that I came in, I felt the independence of who you are. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm always the guy who enjoys people who get it out the mud, man. So, I like, when I seen you come in to Instagram, I hit Chuck and I was like, hey, whatever Larry Reed want to do, let's make sure that we make it happen. <laughs> um, because, you know, I rock with people who get it out the mud. I just honor that. Yeah, you know, and that's, I think, black men that got it up out the mud, we have a respect for each other. It's yeah. a mutual respect. I was at the airport. Mm, how long ago was that, Nancy? Probably about two weeks ago. I was um, at the airport standing in the TSA clear line, and I felt like somebody pulled on the back of my shoulder. And I was like, I'm used to getting stopped, but I'm like, who is touching me? It's a lot, too much touching. Yeah. COVID, too. <laughs> and so I, I, I just. COVID, I, too? I turn around and I look down. I'll quit hating, man. Me and him about the same I look, size. I look man. down and, I, and it said, Larry Love. I said, Kurt, Curtis Franklin. Curtis and, Franklin. <laughs> Yeah, so it it was cool to meet him. It was cool to see him. That phone was making that speak. It's up. making it do something. Okay, good yeah, stuff. We'll, yeah, we'll get you. Uh, Kendall, you go get. Yeah, we're gonna get something. Man, I'm so home. I'm so glad to be hanging out with you though, bro. Yeah, I mean, and this entrepreneurs, black entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. rare. Yes. Um, important. Yeah. As it relates to the the community coming back. Yeah. I think it's extremely important. So I I wanted you here for that reason. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you what um, piqued my interest. Now I always always thought you were terribly talented on the because in as a gospel artist, I'm still award nom nominated gospel artist. Mm -hmm. get, everybody wanna get that a song played on your show. Yeah. Everybody wanna come and be interviewed by you or Darlene or somebody. And so that's when you first got on my radar. Gosh. And then that was like two thousand and maybe sixteen, seventeen. Maybe 15, somewhere along there. But then somebody sent me a clip, mm -hmm. and it was a clip of a movie. Yeah. And I'm like, a whole movie? This is a for real legit movie. I said, okay, what, where is this at? 
and I heard about your story and how you got started. So yeah. that's the conversation I want to have tonight. I want to know everything about where you come from and how you got here. Yeah. One of my close friends um, had like disconnection from their parents and was like in an adopted situation, but with somebody in their family. Got it. And I know all of the struggles that they went through as a result. They're not where you are. Right. And so it's very, it's very interesting to me. So tell everybody that you know that Willie Moore Jr. is here with <laughs> us, and we are going to have a conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. So hit like and hit share and let everybody know that we are on. For those of you that do not know, this platform has went through a total facelift. And so what we are doing now, we're still going to be having a conversation. I'm still going to be me. I'm still going to be making those posts and having those stories. But what we are trying to do, and this is how you can help, we're trying to let people know how expanded the Larry Reed Live brand is. It's not just comedy, but it's also faith. That's why we posted. Oh, man, let me tell you what I did. I did, um, I took my patrons, because it, my, let me tell you how my Patreon started in May of 2019. Mm -hmm. When I would have conversations about whatever was going on, and, and I would see the receipts for these stories, because, first of all, somebody else would put it out first. And then I would talk about it. People didn't believe that I saw what I saw. Yeah. So I started putting over this. Look, if you want to know the receipt behind this one I'm talking about, go over there and look at it. But then it switched from that. And I just used to go live over there and talk about how I felt about doing this job. You know, what somebody said about me and how. I'm like, they don't even know me, you know. And then the people wanted me to start praying with them. Well, see, I pastored for 20 years. So you was, so, so listen, okay, so you, you can interview me. <laughs> And then, cause I got to know. So, so you're from North Carolina. I am. I'm from North Carolina. Which part of North Carolina? Raleigh Durham is where I moved from. Here. Got it. But I was raised in a place called Pikeville. That's outside of Goldsboro. Yeah. So I don't know where Pikeville is, you but I know where Johnson Apples there. Okay. Got it. Right outside of there. So, so you there, and then you pastor the church. Like, so did you grow up with a pastor's father, or your pastor's child? How did that work? My father is the pastor. Okay. But. I joined the church around the corner, which was totally different, and I was not supposed to do it with my family because the rest of the family went to this other church. But I was the only one who was really never officially out of a member out of hundreds of family members. So why didn't you why didn't you join your dad's church? Well, my dad didn't start pastoring until later on, and it was okay. Baptist, you know. Okay. So and I ain't well, no I Baptist was Baptist, person. you know. You, yeah, I was raised Baptist, yeah. but it, but we were. If I ain't Baptist. Yeah. And I'm, I'm full blooded apostolic. Apostolic. Right? So <laughs> let me tell you a funny story, Larry. So I didn't know the difference between denominations because my daddy wasn't a pastor. He was a gangster. And oh. so, like, the only thing that I knew was just the common denominator was Jesus. Mm. And so I done been to every type of church that there is. You know what I mean? Oh. So I grew up in Friendship Missionary Baptist Church where the, where the Reverend Dr. Hubert Beckton was my pastor mm. for years and years. And so from there... Becoming an R and B and hip hop dude. Um, yeah, so I, when I posted, I was gonna interview you. Somebody called you by a whole other name. Yeah, Pretty Willie. As That's you can see, the Pretty was. Gone. I'm trying to hold on to Handsome hard though. I'm just <laughs> let, it, let let me hold on to Handsome as long as I can. Oh, um, but yeah, so you know, kind of veered off of, of the traditional church thing. There wasn't no culture outside of what I was doing. And so, you know, I got in the street pretty heavy and then, of course, came out as this dude pretty willy. And then even then, I was just drinking and smoking so much. So I ended up in a Kojic church. Yeah, you right at home in the Kojic church, yeah. smoking and drinking. Yeah, so I, I went to the Kojic church, and you're that right was just more animated, the Larry. Right no, nah, quit hanging on the Kojic. They right wasn't smoking and drinking. That was playing. me smoking I'm just, and I'm drinking. Just, I'm just playing, dude. I, I got I'm still LR working LR. on it, too, hell. I'm still working on it. I'll be honest with you. It's been a unique season after COVID-19. Yeah. I find myself yeah. doing a little bit more than I wanted to. Oh, really? From but, being in the house? Yeah, just being in the house. You oh, know, you come up with sisters. We got to talk about that. We got to talk about that. Okay, yeah. well, a gangster. Your, fa your father was a gangster. So, so my dad, who adopted me when I was three months old, he was an ex-guy, ex-gangster, oh. who was trying to do the right thing. And, you know, he got a job. He wasn't, like, selling dope or nothing, but he was just a guy who, you know, he didn't play with guys. He didn't, you know, he was a very stern guy. He was an army guy. And so when he got oh. to St. Louis, he wasn't playing with a lot of people. He never really went to church, but he loved God with all of his heart. And he showed the love of Christ through his actions. But he loved my pastor, which was Hubert Beckton. And so 
when when I started to go to church. Like I was in church, but church was just something that we did on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I'm not the guy who, you know, have the story. Sometimes I feel so out of place in this culture because they're like, you know how it was Monday? Yes, sir. Some meeting. And Tuesday, it was that <laughs> meeting. And Wednesday, Bible study. Oh. Thursday, I'm in that mug clueless. Like, I have no idea. Because yeah. on, on Sunday, I was in church, but on Monday, I was singing, uh, what was I singing? Forever, my lady. But don't you know what what's so yeah. funny to me? It's because when I first, I'm still a woman, I'm a gospel artist, so I had to go through the radio thing, hustle. So you so, were singing? And I sing and write. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I met, knew, found out about you, yeah. it was like, okay, that's another radio host. We got to get to see us. We got to get our song on, on the radio. So when I first met you, I felt like what I'm finding out now. Yeah. But when I met you, it was Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I said, I, I don't I told my sister, then I said, I don't feel like he's real. Because yeah. I didn't know you. Yeah. And I said, I don't feel like he's real. I said, he feels like he's something else. But he yeah. gets all the Jesus, Jesus. Do you feel like as time went along, after you got into the gospel music industry and you started doing the gospel thing, are you more now your full self than you were in the beginning? You know, I've always been where I was. I just always believed to bloom where I planted. So if I was hollering, Jesus, 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 it was more so because that's really the type of atmosphere that I wanted. That's what I needed. Right. So, you know, in this culture, it was a little unique for me because I didn't really grow up in the culture. So for me, it's a little bit more flamboyant. It's a little bit more, um, it's a, the energy is a little bit more, um, you know, I just got a different energy. Like, like I ain't really on that. Like, if I like you, I like you. If I don't, I just don't. Okay. You know what I mean? So yeah. for in this culture, like confrontation is, a, is very unique. So, yeah. so you don't want to have confrontation. Yeah. So for me, I get it. I, I'm from St. Louis. So if I don't rock with you, I love you with the love of Christ. But if I don't <laughs> rock with you, I just don't rock with you. And I'm, I'm okay with having that conversation with you. Mm -hmm. I was in a room with some of the Gospel Grace one time, and they were like, um, well, did somebody ever try to do something, something to you? I was like, no, that won't never happen to me, homie. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you can see it here, a pin drop. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I, and, and, and I asked, I was like, did I say the wrong thing? Because I just never felt that I had a place in this. And so I just try to be over nice and I try to be who God wants me okay. to be. Because if not, like, it's like totally the other side of the pillar. But I think where we are now, as far as the church is concerned, and just our culture, are looking for people like you and like me who aren't scared of confrontation. No, you definitely ain't scared. <laughs> No, I love it. I, I lo no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not I at all. I, I, there's a part of me that sort of likes confrontation, especially yeah. if it has a confrontation with a purpose. Yes. If we're trying to get to a conversation, get to a, a means to an end, or all of us end up better, yeah. come on, let's go ahead and have the conversation and the confrontation at the same time. Yeah, yeah. But I, I really yeah. like how you, you come. It's like God brought you sort of in the church to make the, ch not just for you to get closer to God, but so you, you sort of became one of the leading voices in the church. Glory to him. I, I don't think that's that's by a mistake. I think that's by design. Yeah. I think there's something that you have to say and a vantage point and a viewpoint that you have that is unique and that the rest of the church should pay attention to. Yeah. That's so just what I think. I was the guy that you were praying for. So while mm -hmm. you guys were in church praying, like we were out there doing everything that you all were speaking against. And so I thank God for my mom, who's 80 years old. Like she prayed for me. Like she wasn't no church woman. She loved God, still cuss a little bit. My auntie, you know, she was in church real deep. But they just knew that I had something unique on the inside of me when I was living contrary to what God truly wanted me to do. Like they never really spoke against the place where I was. They never focused on the immediate. They always focused on the ultimate. Mm -hmm. So I under they ultimately knew that I would become a person of influence. But they were just like, I think you're running in the wrong lane. Because mm -hmm. when I was running in that that lane, it's like I had to try so hard. Like, okay, I got to be tougher. Because I was never like tough enough to be in that because I'm like giving all my money away. You need something, everybody. You know, you know what I mean? And then when I come into the church world, um, I can just remember that I just wasn't necessarily accepted because I had this ball cap on. I'm flipping it around. I don't necessarily know the church jargon or how to speak, wow. speak Christianese at the time. And so a lot of people had like certain things to say with me. And But I thank God for my pastor. Um, and I don't know how real we can get on we your get platform. Real, this, you yeah. get real, real here. Yeah, shout out to Dr. F. James Clark. And of course, I never want to get him in trouble. Um, but I literally called him and I said, man, I, I heard the voice of the Lord say your way or my way. He said, give me 24 hours. I'll talk back to you. And uh, he called me back, and he said, stay where you are. He said, stay where you are. Keep running the course. Let me continue to pray. And so finally, I moved back to St. Louis, Missouri, after living in Los Angeles, because I had a deal with Warner Brothers at the time. And I remember mm. I was looking for somebody to, to kind of mentor me or disciple me, if you would. And with tears in his eyes on the phone, he said, 
I can't assign nobody to you. What God wants to do for you, he said he's going to feed you from his hand. And every part of your journey is going to be definitely directed by him. And I don't want to get in the way of what God is doing. And he said, plus, these niggas will end up messing up what God is doing. That's that's really real. Yeah, he said they'll end up messing what God is doing. I don't want you to know too much about this culture because God wants to feed you from his hand. And then I ended up... um, Taking a club day, sneaking because I needed seven grand to pay my uh, mm-hmm. to pay my bills, because mm-hmm. I was used to making a lot of money in the club, mm-hmm. and so back then social media wasn't as big. So all I'm saying, young fly and save on this stage, but people giving me crosses when I leave, they not really giving me no check, so I can't really pay my Range oh. Rover bill, my house bill. I got a wife, a baby mama, and children, wow. and so I ended up sneaking and getting a club date down in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and then the club date didn't work. Because it rained, and it was like a storm, a tornado warning. But they still gave me my $7,500. Mm-hmm. A lot of money at the time. I was like, ooh, I got 7500 bucks. But I ended up going to church the next Sunday, and I ended up at Greenwood Christian Center. And this guy, he said, Pretty Willie's here, man. He got saved. So that was the thing in the church where Pretty Willie, I had songs like Lay Your Body Down in the Midwest area. And um, they ended up bringing me so in. This R- so you were R&B? Super R- R&B. I still don't know what I'm going to do with this hip roll, Larry, but I got everything because I'm on the stage. I got the <laughs> mic. It's good. I'm like, well, God, what the hip roll for? I'm going to pray about that. Uh, but What's on there? And Kurt Franklin do it? They do. I noticed that with Kurt. <laughs> no disrespect, big bro. I love you. But yeah, they do do the hip roll. But I ended up getting on stage. Long story short, I ended up getting discipled down at Greenwood Christian Center. Um, it's a pastor now that everybody knows, Mike Todd. Um, and him and I, we were... I just heard that name. Yeah, Mike Todd. He and, does music too now, right? He does music. He's a pastor at Transformation okay. Church, but that used to be Greenwood Christian Center. Okay. So he had So Fly, and I had Young Fly and Save. And once, uh, once every month on a Sunday, they would probably have about 200 people in general service, but at night we'll have about 800 children in that building. Oh. And we would rock out for the kingdom of God, and hundreds of people would give their life to the Lord. So I did all my discipleship down at Greenwood Christian Center with another pastor, Mike, who went on to glory. Shout out to him. I love him to life. And they just showed me the ropes down there. So that's where my discipleship took place. So that, that's, that's really interesting, and, and that explains the reason why I was interested because I, I like this kind of conversation, like this kind of story. You you were not really, um, you don't come from the church world. You don't know the cult, culture. So your approach and how you deal is probably different and your point of view. So let me ask you this. When I asked you to come on, did anybody be like, don't go? Or after I made the poll? Um, my producer, Big Med, he was like, why the hell didn't I know about this? <laughs> See, um, yes, he, yeah, he did that. <laughs> um, but I follow my spirit. Mm. Um, I'm not here to take nothing. Right, right. I'm here to give something. Yeah, I'm yeah. here to make sure that, you know, my audience understands the maturation in Larry Reed's brand. Yeah. Um, I got a chance to see you two years ago on one level, and then I got a chance to see you interview B.B. Winans' wife, and I right. seen how sensitive you were for her. Because although she seemed very strong, you heard her yeah. heart, and you understand that there were some things that still going on in the right. inside, and you were very gentle with her. Mm. That's when I knew. I said, you know, I, you know, I never know the power of partnership. I never know mm-hmm. what God wants to do. So when I prayed about it, like, you know, I, I felt peace about it. I'm like, yo, I got to go see Larry. Let's see what it is. Well, yeah, two years ago, it was a, it was a little different. No, I, lo- I love him, too. <laughs> like, I love that, that dude who would ask any questions uh, because sometimes, you know, I'm not on my own platform with yeah. the exception of social media. So right. there's certain things that I try to keep cool and clean and calm. Well, how is that? I mean, Ben, you, your lens is totally different. Yeah. And then you have to sit across from all of gospel's greats. Yeah. Like the word preachers, artists. Have you ever been in a situation where you really wanted to ask something or either give them a word from, from the Lord and you just knew that you could not, you know, keep it real? I always do. Like, I always still oh. keep it real. I might not put it on the air. Right. Um, it was one artist who had got into a little bit of trouble, and before he got on, like I shared with him, um, I said, if that would have been my sister, I would have hurt you. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, my sister died because of something that you have allegedly done, right, and right. so let's just get it out in the open. I'm not a guy who's going to be misogynistic about, mm. you know, who you are, what you are. Like, if that was my sister, like, you wouldn't be on this platform. I probably would have done something crazy to you. Mm. And, um, and then he shared his truth. And right. then I realized that it wasn't what the tabloids were saying. Exactly. It was, it was you know. I, that same artist I spoke with, and actually they're supposed to be coming on. And and because that's what I did. When I covered the story, I talked about what was out. Because yeah. that's all I, I mean, if you don't respond, that's what I know. Right. And so I'm going to be able to be instrumental. And also our great friend, I'm pretty sure you know him, um, John Gray. Yeah. Yeah, so. Oh, you going to bring John Gray on here? And the Avenger. Okay, yeah, well, listen, 
I, I love them too. Yeah. Like I, I love all that they've been through. Like you know what I think, Larry. Like it was really, really unique to me when people get quote unquote attacked or they fall victim right. to their own selves. Mm -hmm. Like I think that's just the that's the big time for the church to rally around. Yeah, that's the huge. Because that's time. when you need. Like that's when man, you need. Man, that, that you can turn any attack or or any fall. You can yeah. turn into one of your greatest triumphs. Yeah. You know and. Um, John has grown a lot. He'll tell you. He's yeah. grown a whole lot. I'm happy for him. Mm -hmm. I'm happy for the adventure because it was hard to go through that as a black woman. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have that conversation. They're open to it. And they said yes. And I said yes. And so like the the Grays, there's someone else who went through in, in, in the public. And we're going to have her here on next week. On your screen, you'll begin to see next week, next Monday, we're going to have um, my sister, my friend, who got a lot to say. Michelle Williams um, of, of Destiny's Child. She mm -hmm. is going to be here with us on next Monday. So I don't want you to miss that. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the movie, because that's what got my attention. Yeah. Tell me about the movie. It's called The Missing Piece, Larry. The Missing Piece. The Missing Piece Movie.com. The Missing P E A C E. The Missing Piece. Um, I was adopted when I was three months old. Um, for 40 years, I never knew anybody in my biological family. How old are you now? Um, I'm 40 plus, 41, yeah. Okay, so you just found out. Yeah, so I just found out uh, 2020 in a pandemic. Whoa. Yeah. So literally, I've been telling this story most of my corporate work. So I travel the country and I speak about adoption and foster care, encouraging people to adopt children. Like, it's 123,000 children right now who are available for adoption. 23,000 children right now, um, literally aged out of the foster care system. I got a really great partnership with Bethany Christian Services, the number one um, Christian adoption agency in the world. So I've been to Africa, I've been to Dubai, I've been across the country, like inspiring people to like, hey, get down with this adoption thing. Because when I found out I was adopted when I was seven years old, I asked my mother, was I a dog? Whoa. You know, because that was the only thing I'd ever seen in mainstream media that was actually promoted for adoption. I saw you when you came in here, the way that your children interact with you and with each other and with strangers. Mm -hmm. You're a great father. Glory to God. I appreciate that, man. Oh, great. Oh, you're a great father. Yeah. Glory to God and glory to Willie. <laughs> yeah, let, yeah. Let, 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 me, yeah. let me call. There we go. Here we go. Let's go, Larry. Look, look, I'm, I'm, Tell I, him. I, I mean, because, first of all, you're a black man. Yeah. You are an adopted black man. Yeah. With no sense of identity really to last year. Yeah. yeah. I mean, ain't nobody going to put it like that, but I know what that means. Yeah. Until last year... And your kids are strong and great communicators. Gotta be. That, when I saw that, I said I like Willie Moore Jr. even more. <laughs> yeah, I'm I, mean, I, mean, I mean, because to see your kids interact and then how they were dealing, how they are now dealing with my kids and then the mother of my children. I'm like, man, this is, this is spectacular. A lot of us in the church, yeah. with mom and daddy in the house, we frick it up. I mean, we yeah. are in there. I seen you do that. So let me tell y'all this. So we hear a dog barking in, in the house. And my kids is here. So my kids like dogs. One like dogs. The other one like, I don't really mess with dogs. And so I'm talking to Larry. Now let me tell you something. It's a beautiful home Larry has here. I love his setup. I always wanted to work from my house. I wanted to have enough room to work from my house. And I just appreciate what you've been able to do. Not having to leave and being able to do this in the home. And then this woman comes down. I was like, who's this pretty lady? He was like, oh, that's my ex-wife. I was like, well, she ain't got on regular shoes. She got on flip-flops like she at the house. She was like, yeah, she lived here too. I was like, how did you? So, Larry, how did you? So, I honor that because I'm in a blended family as well. You know what I mean? And so, how were you able to bridge that gap of communication after you all were married for 18, 15, 18? It was 18 years. 18 years. Yeah. But we were married 18 years and dated eight years prior to getting married. So all of our childhood, all of our history, our memories are the same. Got it. About where we come from. And I don't She's from North Carolina too? Yeah, we're okay. down the street from where I'm from. Okay. And our parents knew each other. Both our parents are dead now, but both my parents are still living. So our, we can be in a conversation and people say certain things and there are certain songs from the country, certain lingo, certain food. Nobody in the room knows what I'm talking about except her. Yeah. And in her world, nobody knows what she's talking about except me. Yeah. You know, so that is the reason why we're able to be great friends. Even when we divorced, and that happened in 2017 officially. And that was when I stopped pastoring traditionally. And <clears throat> like a year before that, I went into entertainment. Two years before that. And when that happened, 
and that breakdown happened, our friendship didn't go anywhere. Because she went into another relationship. Mm. I let her tell that because she said I tell all her business. <laughs> 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 but she went into another relationship, wasted her time. That's what How she long did. was she in that relationship? Um, a, a day and a half. A oh, day and a half. Okay, it was cool. a, it I don't like know, long. probably like 16, 17, maybe 18 months. It ain't right, last long. Okay. But then she took my children. Huh? She took your chi- Go ahead. She took my children down there to Florida with this hoe, and they all stayed in the house. What mm-hmm. did you do? Like, I, I wanted to kill everybody. That's what I wanted to do. I mean, cause we were still in good communication, but I did not like the person that she was connected to, and I didn't like how they were fooling up with my children. And so uh, that was a whole problem. So I just prayed her out of that. Next thing I know, she sent my children back here February 2019. Mm-hmm. But at that time, you know, I'm, I'm leaving pastoring for 20 years traditionally, and I'm now doing Larry Live. I'm on YouTube and Facebook, but I ain't got no money to take care of all these kids. <laughs> I mean, I just dug myself out of bankruptcy in 2017 after the divorce. So two years from then, I'm doing probably like ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 a month, but that's like what I'm bringing in, not counting what's left over yeah, you know, exactly. at, at the entrepreneurial world. Mm-hmm. I said, I can't take care of these kids like that. And I'm staying in a, in a two-bedroom, I think it was. So then I had to get a three bedroom, had to find a way to make more money, you know, take care of my kids and this thing. I know she said, well, why don't we do it together? Here she is coming around the corner. She finna we, come around well, the corner. Why don't we do it? We heard talking about you. Because well, well, oh, no, I, I know I did that. I'm the one brought it up, so don't blame him. I know. I'm nosy. I usually do what he's doing on the radio. So I just ask. So, don't do it. I'm sorry. No, wait a minute. Listen, I'm sorry. I apologize. Do you accept my apology? Thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. So, so I do have to ask one one other question, if you just don't mind, and you can be here. So, so did she make it tough for you during the divorce? Like, I need this. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna. Do that. Oh no. Oh, in fact, I she was in 20 years in the military. So we we were together most of the time. So no half of that's supposed to go to me. I signed all that over. I I won't. We didn't give each other no financial problems at all. No. Why? Yeah. What branch of the military? So he's an army. Okay. Yeah, My dad's an army. Soldier. That's so cool. Yeah, shoot. And Y'all, so this a whole show. I need to put my camera in. We on. got we got twelve episodes. Um, the patrons watch. This year we're gonna let it. It's called Reading Things My Way. If you want to watch Reading Things My Way, you go to bimeocom slash on demand slash rtmw. It's on your screens right now. Man, Reading Things My Way. Let me tell you something. Larry Reed monetized everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Larry Reed done monetized everything. He done got out that tradition, so now he got the freedom to do what he want to yeah. do. I Let me tell you something. He ain't rubbing two nickels together, too. Let me tell y'all that. Huh? This, I Listen, I'm going to tell you this. Yeah. I just love the fact that you cho- you've chosen to do it big. Yeah. Like, I've been challenging people on the radio for years not to mander in the maze of mediocrity just because you're a Christian. Like, so you'll just mander in the maze of mediocrity because you're, like, waiting on God to do something when he's giving you the innate ability oh. on the inside to go out and be great. You preach it. And so, like, I, appre- like you, I don't think you understand how much I appreciate, and I'm not being misogynistic Mm -hmm. to you, I'm literally saying, like, I appreciate that you chose big versus mediocre. I didn't have no choice. Because, see, I come from a lot of pain, a whole lot of abuse. Poor, being poor is a mental illness. And so I had to do a whole lot of healing in my mind. And when I stopped pastoring traditionally, okay, you're going from six figures to nothing. I mean, I didn't didn't have a, a bridge you know, I had to, my employees, I had to, well, one or two of them, I had to move in my house and ask to be roommates to help me pay for this rent. You know, so it was a very humbling process. And I made a decision. I put Larry Live logo up all over the room, took my bed out, I slept on the floor until it turned into what it is today. So I came off the, I stopped doing that probably in 2018 or 19. Yeah. And, yeah, so that's what I did. I had to work hard. I have no choice. So everything I was able to do, because in the church, I was a prophet and apostle and a bishop over the churches. So what I did, I still had my gift, you know, which I have a strong um, ministry of intercession and prophecy. So what I did and deliverance. So I created this thing called Life God. We can call me and get prayer and prophecy. And so you can do it free. I done free for like two years at first, free. And then that turned into this huge clientele. And then I began to put, you know, donation amount on that. So I started with that. So that's how I first dug myself out while I was still doing Larry Live. And so people would call me for prayer and prophecy. You know, they lost their job or lost a loved one. They need to know what to do next. And, you know, I don't know, should I take this job or not? And I would go to God. He'd tell me. i tell them. And you know, then they come into 
thousands of dollars. They oh, you and come right back. Then they come thousands back of dollars. dollars. You know? yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so it was that's how it all started. And then the Larry Live began to pick up with them Google checks and Facebook checks. Yeah. And then in 2020, people were like, look, we come to you for all our spiritual nourishment in Patreon. Can you start doing prayer again? You know, can you start a church? And so I had to start the church back again and the prayer, Reformation prayer call. So I started that last year. So I had to hire my pastor. That he, that guy right there, he was a pastor over my church when I was being in, being in other countries. Him? I had to take him off my job, to off his job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, I got a job for you. Look, you talking about prophesy, prophesying and preaching and teaching? That one right there. That's love. Yeah. And but so, you didn't forget your people, though. Mm-mm. I, no, no, I did forget many. Cause I, I, I mean, some of them have to be forgotten. But those who are called to the next I year. forgot them, and I don't want them to call me or Come on, don't do me. that. I mean it. Don't, don't do call that, me and box me for on. nothing. For nothing. Don't call him. He got enough for y'all to call <laughs> him a little bit. <laughs> I still he love might, it. He might not get to you, but he all right. Praise I still love it, but I want nothing to do with you. But anyway. <laughs> and so... so I mean, he probably don't like me saying it, but I don't care. Some people yeah. get me wrong. I mean, yeah. I, I bought houses, paper weddings, funerals, colleges, and then y'all tripped on me when I said I'm going into entertainment, and then you disappear. No, I won't pull up with you. No, don't come call me for nothing. Yeah, you're deep personality. Uh, like I'm an eye personality, so it's kind of like, oh well, you know, it's okay. And you like, and then I got a deep personality around me though. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, no, no, hell no, they can't do that. <laughs> They can't treat you like that, boss. And we got it. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, then I have to let them go. Mm, yeah, I, I mean, I got a side that is like that. I yeah. don't know, um, but I'm done. Once I'm, once you show me a few times something, I'm out. I'm yeah. out and I'm out forever. You know, it may take one or two times. Yeah. You know, God, I have a forgiving heart, but once you out, there's no returning yeah. at all, none zero. So that happened in 2020. Started at the church. Now I have the staff, and so just last weekend, weekend before last, we I brought a few hundred of them together and gave them a great time here in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a night of bowling at Bolero. Bolero. I rented it out Saturday. We had experts, panel experts, um, Bloomer, Joy, and a whole lot of different people. Yvette Flunder, Carton Pearson. Then that night, I done an interview with Vicky Winans, Ty Tribbett, Deidre Hatton. Who else? Yeah, Ma from Tyler Perry Play. Mm-hmm. Then Sunday morning, Kurt Carr and the Kurt Carr singers came. I mm-hmm. preached. I got in the pulpit for the first time in a year and a half. Um, got in the pulpit and preached, and it was a crazy time. That's good know? stuff, man. Yeah, so. I love the journey, man. I love the journey. Yeah, Sometimes it, you just see where people are. Mm-hmm. You know the glory, but you don't necessarily know the story. You don't know the story. So when you talk about adoption. Yeah. And being gold. Because you're a minister too, right? Yeah. yeah. So where did you preach your initial sermon at? You know what? I was in St. Louis, Missouri, Shalom Church, City of Peace. Mm-hmm. Dr. F. James Clark, pastor. Um, you know, mine was just so non-traditional when I got licensed to be, to be a minister. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't get permission to go out and do what I had to do because um, mm-hmm. I just didn't know. Like, you know, we were like in, like, they would bring us in the schools and they'd be like, well, you can't talk about Jesus. And I, and I wouldn't. And then I would just say, listen, if you just, if you just need love, like, if you just need love, you just need a hug, you need somebody to speak over your life. And like hundreds of kids would just come to the front of auditorium. Um, I would be in the club. I would use my pretty willy days. And I would have a song called Good Thing. I let you know that you're my good thing. And they would come down. And I would say, I know that you love that song, but the Bible says that he who findeth the good thing, you find the oh. wife, find the, and they would say, good thing, and obtain right. a favor from the, and people in the club would be like, the Lord, and I would be like, right, and so if you love that song, that means there's something good on the inside of you, and if you want to accept God, I would be in the club, and literally, like, people would come to the front of the stage, and I would pray over them, and then I remember one time being in um, a little little place in, like, Texarkana, like, you know, it's like the chilling mm-hmm. circuit, and I remember the, the owner, he was saved, he just had a club, and I remember he shut the bar down, he was just like, Hey, the boy closed night, but man, you can go and take a picture with, you know, or what have you. And so I was just using and blooming where I was. And then my pastor, Dr. F. James Clark, who I love the life, he said, hey, man, look, man, you know, this whole city talking about you, man, about what it is. And pastors ain't really happy about you running around here, man. But before they get on you, I'm going to license you, man. You can't be no, you can't be out here, you know, no shade tree. Mm -hmm. Preaching like that. So he ended up licensing me, licensing me. And then from there, that evangelistic ministry, that arm really took off. And, you know, we ain't, we ain't stopped to stop running since. How did you end up 
being the person that we listen to all the time on on the radio. I mean, because you for me, you came out of the blue. I didn't know mm-hmm. about the pretty Ricky stuff till later on. Yeah. So how how did it happen? So every single Wednesday at nine p.m. on YouTube, I would do these messages when my hat would be flipping. Willie Mo Jr. here, and I would give like a comedic message, and then my subscribers went up like crazy. And then people started calling me to like do comedy, but I wasn't a comedian. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I'm not a comedian. I just still still tell real stories. And if you like laughing at this stuff, some of this stuff is so tragic. You going to hell for laughing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and then this one white guy like in Arizona, he called me. He's like, Oh my God, Willie Moore Jr. Man, we want you to come and do some comedy. I'm like, Bro, I ain't no comedian. I'm just a storyteller. He was like, Yeah, we had about fifteen thousand dollars for a comedian. I was like, Man, call me Eddie Murphy. <laughs> so I ended up going down there doing comedy. But every time I make people laugh and everybody having a good time, like I could not resist the opportunity to present Jesus yeah. in a very unique, unique way. And of course, I'm laughing, I'm joking, cussing a little bit. Yeah. I love God, still cuss a little bit. Pray for me. <laughs> but at the end, like people would literally give their life to the Lord, yeah. and I got a real like I got like I, I get a kick out of people realizing that all this great stuff that you think I do, it that is not me because mm-hmm. I'm like I'm not who. I'm not who you see for real. Like, God did something really deep in my heart. Okay. You know what I mean? Still people in St. Louis right now who are still a little nervous of some of the things that I did in my past. I'm mm-hmm. like, I promise I'm not the guy who's going to get you. I promise I'm not the guy who's going to call people to do crazy things. Like, the Lord did a transformative work in my life. But I'm not trying to be anything but who I am in the moment. And I want people to see me grow. The next thing you know, churches started to call. And then I was serving. I kept serving. I start, came down to Atlanta with nothing, probably like three, four, five thousand dollars. Like, and that went by what quick. What year was that? Um, seven, uh, nine years ago, twenty twelve ish, twenty twelve. And I served Canton Jones. I seen him in a vision. The pastor told me that you should have a giant to slay and a king to serve. Mm. And I was like, okay, God, who's my king to serve? And I seen Canton Jones. I was like, dang it, I want to go to L.A. You know, because yeah. I was doing the acting thing. And I came down here and served for free. And then um, I was serving Dwight Stone, a radio guy. I didn't well, want to do I radio. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely didn't want to do radio. Um, but I served him, and the next thing I knew, man, you know, we had a radio opportunity from serving Tom Joyner. And uh, wow. but I just give it all I got in terms of serving, you know, and keeping it humble. Like, I think sometimes when you start rubbing two nickels together, a lot of people get so unapproachable. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my parents were ex-sharecroppers. My daddy, 89 years young. My dad, my mama, 80 years old. They adopted me when I was three months old. Like, they not having that crap. There's mm-hmm. a certain level of humility you got to walk in. So I think that humility piece continues to expand my brain. You got to jump to the front. I mean, because the radio is a powerful space in gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Now, your real parents, do you yeah. know who they are? You know what, 2020 in the Missing Peace movie, during the pandemic, after writing a book called You Belong Here, an adoptee's love story, um, I was doing it for parents who had adopted and foster children. I started to create a documentary centered around my parents. My purpose partner, she lost her father about seven years ago. And she said, get as much footage as you can of your mother and your father because you never want to miss the opportunity to look back. I wish I had more pictures. I wish I had more videos. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. In fact, I'll shoot a whole documentary centered around them. So I got my camera guys, did what we had to do. I was ready to push this documentary, sell a lot of books, get a lot of kids um, in homes, make a lot of money, of course. And I was excited about it. It. And then a pandemic hit. And during the pandemic, I ended up, after lobbying in the state of Missouri to get my original birth certificate, I ended up getting my original birth certificate and I realized I did not have a name. Really? No name was listed on my birth certificate. It said no name? It just was blank. Wow. So I get my original birth certificate. There's no name on it. I think my biological mother is dead mm-hmm. because the adoption agency sent me a sent me a email insinuating that, you know, your mother has gone on to glory. But they did have my mother's name on it. And my mother's name is on there. I give it to the ED of my foundation, Shanta Flowers. I give it to her. And she said, do you mind if I do a little snooping? Mm -hmm. Whatever. In 2009, they found my biological mother. She refused to meet me. In my head, I thought she was dead. It is what it is. But I knew I had a brother, and I thought this might be a good time to maybe meet him. So I said, sure, do a little snooping. Didn't think anything else. 48 hours, I'm in the car after leaving the radio. She calls and says, with tears in her eyes, like, I think I found a dude who might be your brother. Do you want to see a picture? I was like, yeah, what the hell? Let's do it. And I look at the picture, 
And I was like, yeah, that's my brother. He's a little bit bigger than me. And she was like, well, would you like to see the woman who's your grandmother possibly? And I think, you know, she's dead. She has a death, death certificate. So she said that. I'm thinking my mother is dead. And she said, well, would you like to see a picture of your biological mother, the lady who I think who could allegedly be your biological mother? I was like, sure. And I see the picture, and she doesn't get off the phone. She says, the only thing about this woman is that she doesn't have a death certificate. Mm. I was like, she ain't got no death certificate. She's like, no. I ended up getting on the phone with my brother, long story short. She's not dead. Um, I ended up meeting him. We got cameras on it the whole time. I ended up meeting my biological mother. She's a beautiful woman who loved God, who always had me in her heart. And um, we got a beautiful relationship that we're building. And my mother and my biological mother that's, like, placed here on my, mm-hmm. on my, on my chain, my mother and my mother, I carry them both with me. They share the same birthday. They talk once, a, once or twice a week. January the 12th is my mother's birthday and my biological mother's birthday. Um, and so, and my name is Willie. I'm actually named after my forever dad, Willie Sr., but mm-hmm. my biological grandfather, her dad, his name is Willie. Whoa. So, man. you know, it's just like the hand there of God. There comes me that scripture where it says, when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will pick me up. And sometimes the Lord will pick you up. It's actually giving you a, a, a giving you foster yeah. family. Yeah, yeah. Man, that is so in, in alignment. Yeah, yeah. So when it comes to God, like I just use a lot of testimonies when I go out and preach and speak um, because I think people need to see the realness of who God is. You know, a lot of times, like when people come out and they see pastors or they see people who are, you know, getting the opportunity to be an orator from the pulpit, they often just think it's going to be a history lesson. But I take that word of God and I make it applicable to now. I do like a lot of fun stories. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have a lot of fun. I was a youth pastor for like two years, right? Um, in Charlotte, North Carolina, mm-hmm. um, New Beginnings Church. Shout out to um, Reverend Tawanda Henderson and, and Dr. Henderson there. Mm-hmm. Um, I did that and then the radio came. You didn't like, you didn't, oh, so the radio pulled you from there? Yeah, it that season was just up. I loved it. Like, I love those children. Those Do you probably, think you ever passed them? A lot of people say that, you mm-hmm. know, and, you know, we'll see what God says. Like, I don't mind it. I don't think it won't be, I don't think it will be in the traditional sense, it if you will. It can be. It can be. Um, I mean, I, unless you're going to sacrifice some of yourself. <laughs> Look, I mean, you, this, look, you like I've been there before. I ain't no, gonna no. never do that. <laughs> and then look, no. uh, I keep calling her, calling her like I'm just saying, your wife, ex wife, Alisa. 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 Uh-huh. My bad. <laughs> My bad. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, I would love, I would love to see, you know, see some whatever. I mean, now, I what do. I'm doing now, the way I'm pastoring now, I mean, these are people are LRLers, so I can say anything. Yeah, I can just about do anything. They know me by the spirit, right. you know. So I've cr- sort of created that world where I can do anything, you Got know, it. you know, but. The way that it was, I couldn't. So they yeah. understand how some men and women of God can be dual agents. Yeah, you know, so they they good with that. Got it. But but a lot of people are are not. So it would have to. But you in Atlanta? This yeah. Atlanta's open to to a lot. Yeah, They're open to a whole lot of different things. So I think that it would be good for. Um, I mean, if the Lord take it that direction. You know, to do that, I, it would make sense to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I do a lot of personal. I just, you know, I do a lot of speaking with corporate entities and get them oh, excited about life. That's a different kind of coin. Yeah, I mean, God has been good. God has definitely been good in that area. But now I just feel like this urge that God is doing something new, you know, and not to be like super duper deep or whatever, but like I'm in this crazy transition right now where I literally don't know what he's going to do next. So I'm sitting what still. What you mean? You about to leave right now? If you do, you said here, so it'll be exclusive right here. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not leaving my radio You're audience. Not, okay. I think. Right. I think. I think that's something special right now. You know, whenever that season, when God does tell me that that season is up, I'm definitely gonna well, be how obedient. How long is the contract? That's God. How long is the contract? Mm-hmm. Well, it up? well, you know, with my contracts are a little different. Oh. Um, I'm not an employee, so mm-hmm. it's a it's an acquisition. So most of my acquisitions are either 12 months or 24 months. Okay. So you know, even this new acquisition that we're about to do with BET with the Missing Peace film, that's mm-hmm. just an acquisition. Most of the deals that I do, they're licensing deals, oh. um, and that's what I tell with independence. Like even you, like I know somebody's gonna come, um, but what you do is you build this thing out. You create licenses, like renting a car. You know what I mean? So if it's a five year, two year, three year, seven year, you always want to make sure that those master those masters or those uh, rights come back to you, so you can continue to have that residual income, especially if you have children. My kids will never, ever, ever go without, right? My trust is set up where they got to be, you got to do certain stuff, you know, name your kids, yeah, Willie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, if you name mm-hmm. Willie as an extra $10,000, you know what I mean? <laughs> so you want, <laughs> you know, you want to set your life up where you're, you have some form of ownership. Yeah, I mean, that's what I did. Um, my One of my music mentors, Kurt Carr, I remember years ago he was family. 
He said, Reed, you done way better than I did. Excuse me, you girl come looking up to you. He said, You own everything. He said, every song you wrote, everything own he said, them. you own your your face, your image, your brand, and everything. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage everybody that's listening to us that is an entrepreneur, you're creative, you have intellectual property to make sure that you own every darn thing. Please now, own something. Okay, so with your radio show, do you enjoy doing it? You enjoy radio? I do. I, lo I, lo I love my team. Okay. Big Man the Producer is probably the best producer that a man could ever have. Mm -hmm. um, if it wasn't for him, I don't know how much I would love the the business side or like he shields me from everything. Oh, that's good. Um, you, so you can stay talent. Yeah, I can stay talent. Yeah. That used to offend me because I was always doing so much in entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So when I would see talent, I'd be like, Y'all gonna have to put my name on there or something. Like I ain't no talent, you know. But I realize that pride is gonna always make an excuse to be great, right. but humility is always gonna make an adjustment. So I took mm -hmm. that humility and I adjusted it, and then I got a chance to see the beauty in Big Med, the producer. And so he makes it fun, he makes it easy. My audience is amazing. It's like a cult following, is yeah. what I believe. Yeah. Just because, you know, we understand that we're perfect, and we thank God that forgiving people go to heaven and not perfect people. Oh, well, yeah, you got a whole lot of little sayings you're saying is really good. Really? You said about four or five of us. You've been it. <laughs> it's the uh, hand for me. You said, you, said for, you said forgiving people. You said about heaven. What you just said? Yeah, like forgiving people go to heaven, not perfect people. Yeah, and like you I think said God something about the humble person or just something you just said a few minutes ago. Pride is going to always make an excuse. Yeah, okay. Like pride is gonna be like, right. cause that's that's what I see here. That's why mm -hmm. nobody can ever tell me anything about Larry Reed. Mm -hmm. I go to bat for you now, okay. like to the end, okay. because I seen the ins and outs. Right. This is what I see with you and uh, Li uh Alisa. Alisa, that's humility. Yeah. That's yeah. an adjustment. Yeah. You can't tell me you can't, cause this this could be prideful. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But yeah. humility is like, okay, cool. Now I see why God is she blessing could, she me tremendously. Could take this a whole another way. I could take this a whole another way, but we put our children first. Because that's why we're in the same space. It's we put, uh, that's the whole reason why. Because she makes money. I make money. Of course, I make way more. <laughs> but. but <laughs> aha! Oh she made more in the why, beginning. Why don't y'all just get back together, though? Like. Won't you get back together, whoever you broke up with? No, I'm just saying, like, why? But that's, this, that's no. Why. <laughs> but it just worked, it worked better like this. Oh. Ain't no way you can have her just sitting around here walking around every single day. Well, she's got so she, she got her sauna, her beauty one, her li room, her library, her prayer room, all on this side of the house at the bottom on yeah. the third floor. Got it. Say days I don't see her. Right. But so there you, are. But we are right. human. Okay. We are human. But we're not fucking. Okay. But we not are, at all. We're not, not even not, like not, not in the tip end. Just a little bit. To play around. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> we're not. Going so does she get an opportunity to date and stay here? She can. We can, can they have, come? We can have, they come here? Have, 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 okay, no. okay, okay, okay. So I just want to know: here? Can they come no. here? No. <laughs> she was, but she ain't that kind of chick. She wasn't. But do I'm that. saying it's like he's on this. Like this is a nice size house, <laughs> so it ain't like yeah, he didn't know. They could come around, around the back. And yeah, boop. they could easily. I would not do that. She wasn't. Do it. But she ain't even that kind of chick. That's the pastor's daughter. She Who ain't got. She not even. She ain't do nothing like that. Yeah. I just think this is a unique thing. I think it needs to have cameras all on it. But I know you will want to own it, and there's no level no, I ever. I do own it. That's right. I just want to make it like <laughs> something they could go on like Lifetime uh -huh. or something. They would love this show. Yeah, it's look, and our children are just as comical and colorful as we are. I mean, it's yeah. a whole village. Yeah, you know, it's very interesting. But yeah, I I wouldn't ever do anything to hold her back, and she wouldn't do anything to hold me back. If yeah. I wanted to decide that I'm going to go ahead. And just tell Michelle Williams yes and go ahead. <laughs> you heard it here first, right here on Larry Reed Live, that he wants Michelle Williams. If Michelle says yes, Larry will not say no. If Michelle says yes, Larry won't say I'm just no. Playing. I'm just playing. I think she, I might, she might be looking at that millionaire guy. What's that guy where I done that story, the millionaire, um, DeMonte, something other like that? She be liking his stuff all the time. But How does, you know what she liking? I pay her during attention. And praise God. We know what we want, so we watch what they do. No, it's not stalking. She, it's it's observing. I pay attention. I pay attention, but it's all right. I'm, we, we just, we, we just cool and where she be in next week. Remember next week, Michelle Williams. Those of you that have dealt with depression and have went through all different sorts of types of things, she got a word to talk concerning that. And we're going to have fun because we have a great time when we are doing this. Glory to God. Willie, I want to know how has it been at when, as it relates to like what you're saying with what we're doing, how are you dealing with that? 
what with with like relationship mm-hmm. or what have you. It's been good. I've been learning. I've been learning life. I'm learning more about myself. You know, meeting all of your biological family. It do mm-hmm. something to you when you've been adopted. Mm-hmm. And so I will be the first to say that I know I have changed tremendously. Yeah. I've always been a bit of a pleaser. Like literally at the detriment of myself sometimes. And for the first time in my life, I'm actually like, you know, saying no to some things. I think no has become my best friend. Like no is a sentence that doesn't require explanation. I didn't ever know that. Mm -hmm. And so like with that, I've set some new boundaries for myself. I rest now. Like I spent a lot of time like grinding and toiling and never giving myself an opportunity to rest. And so, you know, everybody's trying to adapt and learn the new me. And it's uncomfortable for everybody, not just at home, but even with my staff. You know, they used to like, hey, man, they put 10 on the book, 20 on the book. Willie going to go like money don't move me like that. Like it has to be purpose. That's how me, I think. I know she take ownership for the breakdown of our marriage, but I take ownership for the breakdown of our marriage. This is my own. I was the same way because it was all about the work. It was all about the grind. Because once you have been broke and nobody <laughs> handed you anything, you're going to work. <laughs> you are going to work. And this put made me put my family second many mm-hmm. times. And so that was the breakdown of, I think it was the breakdown of yeah. our relationship. Um, that's all I really like to say about that. I, mean, I think I think so too. Yeah. Like when I listen to, you know, some of the things, I realize that I did spend a lot of time working. But when right. you lose, like, I lost everything. I was living in the basement of my mother-in-law's home, and I'm a man, man. Like I'm not the guy who wanted like, man, I got this girl paying for this. I've never been that. You know, the Bible tells us that a man or a, a person can't take care of his family. You worse than an unbeliever. When I read that scripture, I was like, oh, I got to get it. But now I realized that there were a lot of opportunities to be there for my family that I missed. And although I do a great job of parenting and what have you, um, I will say, you know, a lot of times I was just going for the bag and going for the opportunity to make sure that we were okay. Like, it was tough to see my three-year-old jumping on his bunk bed outside in the front yard. That still haunts me. You know what I mean? With him a smile on his face with one of my hats on saying, Daddy, Daddy, what's going on? Like, it still hunts me that we were staying in a 700-square-foot apartment um, in, in southeast Atlanta. And he kept saying, when are we going to leave this hotel because it was so small? Like, it still haunts me that he was still staying on a air mattress because I could not afford a bed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, one of the things that I noticed, you didn't tell me I couldn't ask, but there's something I cannot ask. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Now, so how did I should always see on your IG? It would be you and your wife mm-hmm. you exercising all the time. Yeah. I thought it was a great setup. I yeah. Because this is what we do. I mean, even reading things that I, I reading things my way. Mm-hmm. And the me. Reading things my way. I look at that, um, and I see how we work together, and you guys work together good. So, yeah. are you saying that in working? you feel like you it was a breakdown in the relationship? I worked a lot, and I push people. Mm-hmm. I see the best in everybody. Like, even right now, I got 45 ideas for Larry Reed. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, if we just put the light this way and put a field light and you do this, and then it's just going to look better. Aesthetically, mm-hmm. it'll be there. Like, I'm right. just that type of guy. Like, um, like Tyler Perry. Like, he, like, I have these voices that come in, and I'm writing them down, and I'm doing books, and I'm doing movies, I'm doing television, I'm doing radio, and it just I have these racing thoughts. And it just became a whole, whole lot. And I, it's like I'm the like I'm the slave driver. Come on, guys. Yeah. Now we're writing a book. Come on. Now we're doing yeah, a movie. Done a lot and, of and so yeah. now we're doing this. And now we're speaking. Like, that can be exhausting for anybody. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, she wanted to go and do, you know, be and be independently with her woman group. And I support right. that. Shout out to Just Be Fit. Make sure you go to Just Be Fit, Fit 120. She's doing a lot of work with ladies across the country, and I'm proud of what she's doing, and she's doing it at her own pace. Right. And so for me, like Mike Todd, even checked me. He said, bro, stop out running the pace of God's grace, bro. Mm. Like, you moving too fast. Slow it down. So are you still in love? Am I still in love? Mm-hmm. I still love her tremendously. Right. She's a great person. Yeah. Lisa, are you still in love? With me? Uh-huh. Yeah. Wait. I want to spit it in. Oh, I just had to write that down. Why would I be? We've been together forever. Why are you looking like that? Oh, I want to spit in that answer. Yeah. I mean, but you can still be in love and not necessarily <laughs> like. You said what? Really. <laughs> oh, she got this. You see this finger? Get the mic. Because, hold on. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on a minute. Hold on. You got to get her in the. <laughs> Wait a minute. You got to get. Okay, you got pulled the mic over. But, but I will say, I will say this. You Larry, got pulled the mic over. I will, I will say this. Like to be honest, 
like love is dope but i also think you gotta have some form of like purpose together though absolutely you know what i mean because especially with like a That's working type of guy like there has to be some form of purpose that you all come up with that you all can collectively work towards and so love is one thing like i've never been malicious in any of my actions towards anybody like the mother of my mm-hmm. child patricia nobody i've never yeah, been boss. malicious I would yeah. never be malicious because they gave me some beautiful gifts. Right, exactly. So hold on. So you said you still got love for her. You didn't say you were in love with her. Still. If you, if you don't know, then say you don't know. I mean, I ain't really come here for that. Uh, but, but that's uh, a hung but you, question, though. If you didn't want that, me to ask, you should have stoned that one ass. That's I mean, a hung question. I, I, out I, there. Listen, as far as like my personal life goes when it comes to the mother of my child, Patricia, anybody... I'm always going to have a special love. Okay. Like, I got an 18-year-old right now, and, and the mother of my child has never had to put any type of child support or anything. When I went up, she went up. Okay, now, we got we got to give that a hand clap. Yeah. We got pastors that we've talked about. We haven't heard it. They don't yeah. do that. Yeah, when I go to Memphis, I stay with her and her husband, Pastor Mike Joy. And, and like, you know, when they bought their new house, he brought me in to pray over their house. Hey, what? You yeah, I'm not saying it to that be impressive. That is powerful. Yeah, I'm not saying it to be impressive, but to impress a point. Like, man, God do something special when you just stay humble. Man, now wait a minute. Now, now Willie, this, you done went up like three notches. Yeah. That is deep. I mean, it's deep for other people, but that's God, bro. Like, that's God. Like, if you can be humble and take the bumps and bruises, and I ain't trying to be the perfect dude, because I can cuss yeah, with the best of them. I but, mean, I'm but, 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 I get all that, but... You got to be a, what you're saying, that is, that makes you an amazing person. Glory to him, man. Nigga, why can't I just can't say it makes you nah, a nigga, it's just, it's just what we do. Because cause if I take my credit, if I take the but credit. take the credit, I'm nah, giving Larry, it to you. listen, bro. If I take the credit, <laughs> bro, like, I think it wore off. Like, I'm just kind of wired that way. Like, That's I got to give it back up. What happened is you came in a church from the street that gave you church brain. That's church you do not have to say that. Yeah. Only thing you got to do is say thank you. Glory to him and thank you though. <laughs> oh no, I gotta get, I gotta give it back to him, bro. Like, so my system is my system. That's just my I belief you, system. Man. So I just believe that if I just give him all that great glory, then he'll keep giving me these amazing but, opportunities. But you are him. Yeah. So saying thank you is thank is, you, but glory to him though. <laughs> like I'd be like, boom. Throw it up to him. I got you. I got you. Throw it up to him. I got you. I got to. I don't want him to hell. I don't want him to take it up off me. Because Lord knows I still got some issues, man of God. We all do. That could, you know, it could be a detriment. He's still going to bless. Well, man, you know you've been in a little longer than me. Maybe we talk offline. But like, well, Willie, you can do this, this, and this, and he's still going to do this. No, hold on. I ain't saying that. I ain't saying that. But what I am saying is he bl- he... Calls and anoint, and I know a lot of people do not believe this. He anoints and calls all of who we are, even the ugly part. I love it. So, and I, we just gotta. We're in the the business of learning how to surrender all of that to him with an open, honest heart, and allow him to work through it. Yeah. So that's what I feel. But this, your conversation made me ask her a question. I just, I just. She I said she. She said you said you in love or you love him. Both. Wow. Are you in but love with thing- her or you love her? Well, I'm going to be 100% honest. I don't know if I'm in love with her. I do know I love yeah, her. Yeah, definitely love. Her. Now, I, this is what I also believe. I believe that women are more intelligent when it comes to their emotions than us. And me add that even the more. When it comes to emotional intelligence, I am not that emotional intelligent. I have a lot of empathy, a lot of sympathy. And I feel some things, and God will make me seem like I'm spiritually, um, emotionally intelligent. He'll tell me stuff. But outside of that, I really don't know. Like when I have an event, like that great event I did that cost almost $600,000, I ain't had no church backing me. I did it by myself. You should feel very proud and excited. I didn't feel any of that. I felt like it was a great event. I felt the appreciation when people were coming to me. But I can't get fully in any emotion, whether it's up or down. Yeah. So that's me. Yeah. And so I don't. I'm kind of really, in the middle. Yeah. So if it's great, so it's like everybody is, else. Like this oh, is why I say, saying. if I really wanted Reed, I could have him. 
because I know him. <laughs> you probably but not. I'm, I know what space that I'm in. I know what space that he's in. So I'm respecting that space. So do you ever think it'll possibly? I mean, that's up to him. And I'm okay with that. Him Jesus or him Larry? <laughs> him Larry. Him Larry. Okay. Him Larry Reed. crucified. Him Reed. <laughs> <laughs> La- ladies and gentlemen, there is hope here in the Reed home. Next time on the Willie Mark no, Jr. No, no. show. Only see, Willie Mark Jr. can bring but what this I'm stuff turned on is, us. What I'm saying is, I know me. Okay, I know Reed. I know there's a certain, that's why I don't dress a certain way around the house. There's a certain way if I do dress, if I go in his room, Reed is going to fall. So I'm always dressing. <laughs> so that's why you wear the little jogging pants and stuff. I wear stuff. I know him. I, I, I know Reed. As he fixes and his I glasses don't... right here on the Larry Reed show. His, Reed, his, his glasses are dark, but he's looking in them glasses. That's true. <laughs> and he's but... blushing a little bit too. Like I ain't seen him look this uncomfortable since I got here. But I know him. And but my my thing, I'm not here for that. I'm here for my children. I don't want to confuse them. I don't want them. You want to confuse? I... Ourselves, look, because you, know, you know how we do. Come on, say we with this, and this is what I do. So she said, "What she do?" I, <laughs> when it comes to Lisa, I'm always touching her, and so this is the first time in my entire life I'm not touching her. I, and every once in a while we hug, so that's totally different. Because if I'm gonna touch her, we go, we go all the way. To you know, so, <laughs> so, yeah. um. And that's that's just something I do for myself. Now she still gets everything except for the sex. She give and probably some more of the. Cause I used to pay way more close attention on purpose. But um, like she she don't have to pay anything here. Praise God. If she lightly mentioned she wanted, I'm going to get it. I mean, so still, how do you ever date there. somebody and when you know that you have a man is literally going to provide everything and he's 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 good enough. I mean, you know he's. He's financially stable enough to. What did you say? What did you say, Marco? He said, <laughs> we, ain't we, ain't we ain't dating. But the reason why but I ain't dating is because date? niggas is broke. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, hey, that's the truth. That's what I'm why saying. Why I'm going to date some? he got a Rolls Royce. He has a G-Wagon. Why would I date somebody that has a Honda Accord? <laughs> that's a good makes question. no sense. Next time on the Willie Mark <laughs> Jr. Show, we'll find out. <laughs> If she ever wants to date. No, but I, I am I am not close to dating because I feel like dating's fun. I mean, you go, yeah. you meet people. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't date to have sex. I don't do I'm a I'm a socialite. Yeah. I love to socialize. Oh, yes, she is. So if you wanna take me out and you wanna buy me something to eat. You know, because I'm not paying. <laughs> She's not, not doing that. She's not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm driving my own car because if I want to leave, I'm leaving. Um, it's just those things that um, I'm not. I'm not afraid to date. I just, I just don't see a purpose in it because I'm getting my doctorate. I'm a teacher. I don't have time. Try, I'm trying to raise my girls, which are driving me crazy. And me too. <laughs> you a good dude, though. Yeah. But you see, a good I, dude. But see, I know she, her father. I want you. I want you to understand what she. What he just said. He said if she has a thought or even mentions it too much, I'm gonna take care of it. She gonna get it. She go, I mean, She gonna get it. <laughs> He's not lying. I mean, that's and this my, is your daughter. That's, that's my oldest. Always is. That's my hey. oldest. <laughs> even when I was what not as uh, able I'm able to now, I, I will always her father. See. I know her father, who was a great evangelist under um, Ontario Skinner. What was the name of that man? What is Why it? you always got to bring my daddy in it's, stuff? It's start crying. Yeah. Johnny Washington. Johnny Washington, yeah. <laughs> okay, so. God. <laughs> it was our relationship. You know, because he watched when I was a little child growing up. He always, he prophesied over me what I would be. So then when I asked to marry her, I had to talk to him about it. Okay. And w- in that conversation, he said, well, you know, Lisa's a minister. And I was in the apostolic church. He said, and that, that church didn't have women preach. He said, so I don't know how that's going to work because she, she had to be used by God. Uh, the other thing he said that, you know, you got to take care of her. Because see, at the time, she was in the military, and I was just preaching and being a musician, so my money was here and there. Mm. He said, you got to take care of her. And so that conversation with him and it haunted me. Even when we divorced, it, it haunted me to where he came. And I know this may sound spooky, but those of you that 
I remember my ministry doing house cleansing and casting out demons. He came to me in a dream. That's not sweet. That's and, real. And, and no, this was him. He came to me in a dream. Now we was we wanted together. I didn't know that she then went and made some decisions she made, but I'll tell that. And he said, This is what you do. You embrace her, even with the situation. And he led us to a double door of a church. We're going to sanctuary. He said, this right here, what y'all called to do. He said, whether y'all married or not, y'all got to stick and do this. Now, I didn't even know what she had going on. So she ended up coming and telling me about it. And she was trying to handle it one way. I said, no, handle it this way. Because your father told me in a dream to just whatever happens. I'm going to say what it is. But she she can say I'm telling the testimony. But she had gotten a situation and she ended up getting pregnant. Mm. And we went together. But she done told the story before. So I can tell it. On this platform. It was a, it was a married that is man. It's my testimony. <laughs> but it was a it, But it's mine. I know, but it's connected to mine. It's not. <laughs> it's Next not. time on the Larry Reed Show. Because we'll you find- keep leaving out your pieces and just tell it mine. <laughs> Why was I over there? Because we had divorced and I kicked you out of the church. Thank you. That's right. Because see what happened? I had these new women coming into my life and coming to church. We divorced. And, you and she up. was still coming to church. And that was girl, messing it up. So it was keeping me from moving on. So I'm like, you just need to leave. So then she got in a situation. But she got pregnant and she was going to abort that baby. I didn't know she was pregnant. But this was an ugly baby. Nick, it was ugly. And dream was ugly. Like I was trying to rub it. It was another baby in the dream. And so this, Wait, the person she got pregnant. The hell just happened? The person she got pregnant by is, is ugly as can be. Yes, he is. And so you see the baby in the, in in the, the dream. Vision. So in the vision, the baby, the baby was here. And I was rubbing the baby, trying to change how it how it looked. This is not God. So when she, so when she told me, this so, is no. stuff I dealt with. But, but when she told me, what well, I said, okay, this message, I said, don't kill the baby. She said, no, I cannot be connected to him ever again. You know, which, looking back, she probably made the, the right decision. But just the way I'm set up, it like you weren't ever supposed to do that. But how did you forgive? It was easy. Was it, was it my, time? It, it was my friend. It, it, hold on a minute. Let me tell you what was easy She to, looked like she ain't... Let me tell you what was know. easy to forgive. <laughs> what was easy to forgive was what she had done. Maybe I didn't receive it the way... Because you were trying to tell... You were like, Claire, I can't believe you forgiving me. But it maybe had something to do with... Like I said, I can't really feel an emotion until later on. Maybe that's what it was. Because she was telling me, I was like, that's all right. I got you. I get it. It's cool. But then as we got back together, there was... It, I, I, I couldn't get it out of my mind. So, so maybe, did you ever go to counseling at all, or you just kind of just... Not But do you I go to counseling now, have. or no? Oh, I went to counseling in 2017 when she finally left me and went to this hole down here in Florida. So he when, calls him a hole, dot com. No. no Read, <laughs> shut thine lips. It was a hole in Florida, <laughs> dot com. Shut them up right now. Shut your pumpkin <laughs> lips. <laughs> shut them up. <laughs> shut them up. I love, I love. up. And I'm, that's it. I'm leaving. <laughs> She's leaving now because it's getting hot at the Larry you Reed Show. You are You keep really in on that. All right, you so keep we're really running it back. So, 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 so listen. <laughs> I just want to tell y'all whatever, whatever. Y- long story short, whatever y'all have put together, like I appreciate you all are able to like be this comedic oh, and yeah, fun. Oh so yeah, this, this is real. This is how it is all the time. Yeah. If there was, if there was no camera here, you weren't here, and we had this conversation, it'd be just like this. I love it. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. Man, I'm so glad I got the opportunity to hang out with you. I'm gl- listen, I'm going to tell you this, and I said this before. When I I was at, um, what's the one? Um, Dr. Holly Carter had invited me to someone, and you were there. Mm-hmm. And I remember saying, this is what I said about you. I said it earlier. I said, I don't think he's real. So what does real mean? I didn't feel like you were being authentic. I felt like you were someone different than what was on stage, because I, I remember... I think I spoke to you on, on stage, on, off stage by the bar. Cause it was the Preachers of L.A. Preview. Oh, yeah, 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 that joint. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you got on stage and you just, you just turned on, which I do that, you know, yeah. for this, you know, because when, when I'm here, if I'm in my character, 
My voice is higher. Than yeah, what's going on? Should yeah. F you Willie Moore Jr. I'm so right. excited to be here. Right. Yeah. yeah and man, welcome to Larry Reed Live. Ah, yeah, so that, you know, it's way yeah. high, you know, but yeah. that is not how I talk. Well, exactly. I talk normally. You know, that's something. It's my excited voice. So I just felt like, mm, and I said it. And Benson is not here, but he was we were the only two that was there. And I said, I just don't feel like he was real. But now hearing your story, mm -hmm. I see that you were probably the realest person in the room. You were just, you was doing that. work. Yeah. You know, you know what you need to do. Because off stage, you were like, quiet. You won't really stand up. Then you on stage. I said, what, what was that? Yeah. I said, <laughs> but now, been in the same work, you know, and having done radio for a year and a half as well, I get it. You yeah, know? you know, usually when I'm on the side, I grew up in the streets, Larry. So, like, if you sold dope, like, you didn't have money, you'll go to the dope man and get it fronted to you. And so what he'll say is, here go a pack, you do what you do, bring back this much, and then the rest is yours. So they'll front it to you. So every time I get an opportunity to be on radio, television, on somebody's stage, or even just my life, I feel like the Lord fronted me the work. Mm. And so I'm always looking to bring it back to him better than he gave it to me. Because that's the way just I was brought up when it came to the neighborhood. And so the truth is, I'm never nervous about what I'm going to say. Yeah. But I'm always nervous that I represent him in a way that he can say, man, hey, that's my little cat. Like, I appreciate you doing what you're supposed to do. So I'm always probably like, if I'm quiet and I'm back there, I was a little bit more deeper then. Now it's kind of like a party <laughs> backstage. I'm like, mm, we about to win. <laughs> we about to get them. We about to, you know, so we really excited. I have my children there most yeah. of the time. But back then, like, I was just... I was trying to find my way, bro. Okay. You know, like really trying to find my so way. I was right. That's what yeah, was. like I was really trying yeah. to find my way and looking for an opportunity. You know, I didn't, I didn't really, God put me in this. My, yeah. I thought I was going to be in the club, like to be honest. I wanted 10 clubs across the country, have my boy Trey Songs come through in a, on a Tuesday mm. for 10 grand and make 40 and just yeah. do that. Like I had the Willie Boom Boom room that I wanted to do, but he said your way or my way. Wow. He took me out of that life. But what's wrong with me? Because I would go, I'm going to tell you that, no lie, I have an idea for an app. Yeah. I haven't done it yet. I don't know if I should say this out Don't loud. say it because we might partner on that. It's okay. some partnership going to happen with you. Yeah. I'm letting y'all know. <laughs> I'm going to find something. We're going to partner with. We're going to come out with and some water some or something. Make some money. Yeah, because that annoying's on you. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. That's, I love doing that. That's, yeah. that's what I'm all about. But I, I really, what time is it? Oh, man, we're going so long. Oh, okay, we got to so, go? But okay. you know, thank I you. I didn't even look. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thank you for coming. No, my and, pleasure. And being a yes, you could easily have been a no, and not knowing how I would, how I would handle you. Yeah. Um, I, I enjoyed our conversation. And I think that you're a great guy. And I hope that you are able to have the, one of the biggest platforms wherever you want, it, want to have it, because I think your story will help a lot of people. Um, I'm pretty sure. I didn't look. I'm pretty sure the LR, LRs are enjoying, aren't they enjoying? Have y'all looked? Because we we're live on YouTube and on Facebook, so I have to see. Um, yeah, shout I'm, out to Big Man. He was so like, oh, what y'all going to do? And I was like, man, you know what? I got peace <laughs> on the inside, and I'm going to always do my best to uh, support. Like, I just feel like, you know, this is a good time to meet people at this stage. Because although mm -hmm. this is good, God got something that's so, like, bigger yeah. oh yeah and, man. and like i literally want people to take this clip and say man you yeah. remember when they did that video yeah. and then they did that movie and then they did that that and then they took yeah. over africa asia and they yeah. and then then they did that because i'm willie mo jr live right. that's my instagram wow. and you got live on there yeah, Larry live. so you know there may be something across okay. this country that it, okay. like, like that we have to bring to okay. the world like you got thousands of patrons it's thousands of people in our ecosystem mm -hmm. as well and i just yeah. feel like there's something that could be special absolutely absolutely um, there, there are about over 2,000 people watching between YouTube and Facebook together. So I want all of you guys that are watching to take a moment right now and send eight dollars and eighty-eight cent. Every last one of y'all, eight is my number, so that I can write Willie a nice check. He ain't charge me, but I'm hospitable. Okay. And I and you not leaving no out of here. And you don't have no check. Really? Mm -mm, I, don't, I don't operate like that. But see, I, I didn't get into that until I probably have done that. Wait a minute. You know what? That was just, I can't even say what it is because y'all could be friends. But, <laughs> but, but go to Cash App, dollar sign MBN Network. I tell you offline. Um, dollar sign MBN Network, and you'll be able to send 
anything with three eights in it. You may want to do $28.88. Venmo, the at symbol, MBN Network. And you can also do text to give. Well, actually, I think the one next one coming up now is Zelle. So our email address is info at the MBN Network org for your Zelle donation. Or you can text it. Text the word give right now to 404-800-4530. And you can process your donation in eights. Or you can go to our website, LarryRelive.com. You click there. That's actually PayPal. LarryRelive.com. Click there. Or you can mail it in because there's so many of you that are the more seasoned LRLers who always send in donations. You send me mugs, cups, hats, all <laughs> different types of stuff. 780 Morasco Drive, Northeast, suite number 244-224, Atlanta, Georgia, 303-224. Send it on in so I can write this chick. Why? I want to write a nice chick on tonight. And listen, remember, first of all, if you're watching me and you you, you ever been prophesied to? Yeah. Okay. For real. Not this, this other stuff. No prophet line. Prophesied. Real, real, One dude real. who prophesied to me, y'all might not like him that much, but he was he, he was on point with mm-hmm. me. I ain't going to tell you. We talk about that. I, 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 like, I don't hate many people. I like most people. Brian Conn? Yeah. I, we cook me Brian Conn. Yeah, cool. So some people don't like some of the things that he's done. Yeah. But I tell you I what. don't like it. And I tell them, but Brian is cool. So let me tell you this. Brian Conn, I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, just coming off this R&B thing. And, and they bring me, and then he's like the closer. You know, he's coming mm-hmm. to close. You know, right. I, I'm i new to all this stuff. And, mm-hmm. and they like, man, when you pray, pray for you, people fall. I was like, man, I ain't falling. You know, that's just my thing, mm-hmm. you know. And um, he he prayed, and I ended up on the ground, and I got up like, oh, did I fall? You know what I mean? Did y'all get that on tape? Make sure you erase it. And then I met him afterwards, and he looks at me, and he says, are you in Atlanta? I said, no, I'm not in Atlanta. He said, as sure as my name is Brian Corn, when you get to Atlanta, I see you on billboards. I see you on radio. I see you on television. If you just get to the spot, Everything that you've ever dreamed of is going to happen in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, cool. And then he turned around and said, if I tell you a duck and pull a truck, hook it up. (laughs) And then, and and when I made it here, like God's favorite was here. I'm going to shock you. It was him that prophesied to me that I'll be in Atlanta. Well, he told me that. Yeah. So when I see something. He said, he said, I was in New York at the time. Yeah. He said, you're going to Atlanta. He prophesied to me. I still got on audio. And he was right about that. Yeah. He definitely was. But those of you that love the prophetic ministry, if you're doing $8.88 on tonight, as long as you put your number in there, our prophets will call you, pray for you, and give you the word of the Lord. And also, my spiritual father, I don't know if you know Bishop Bernard Jordan. I see you on his prophet. Instagram. Master. <sighs> I like when he, gets, he sits back and he's just like, the master prophet, the most trusted name, name in, in prophecy. prophecy. Right. That's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. This is the truth, though. Yeah. You call 515-604-9266 at 9 o'clock tonight. He will be on this line. Go over there listen to him teach. And anytime you do any kind of donation, I don't care what it is, they're going to call you and give you the word of the Lord. We all need to be hearing what is in the mind of God right now. So make sure you check him out, my spiritual father. Now, one of the things that I, I love about um, this show is that we get to have conversation with, with people like you. Uh-huh. And we need all of you that have watched tonight and have enjoyed to share this link out, hit like, so that people know on Larry Live, we do more than just commentate about what's happening uh, in our world. But we have real conversations with real, real people and we learn real things. Next week, Michelle Williams will be here. Before next week, I'm going to be airing the interview with Diedrich Hatton and Vicky Winans. Let me tell you something. Vicky Winans didn't hold nothing back. Nothing. She won't. She didn't hold nothing back. I, I thought we had come to agreement that we weren't going to discuss certain things, so I'm going to talk about it. everything else. She just like, well, you know, I feel good, and I already know who you are, and, it's just, it's just, and she just, blah, blah. so we're going to be <laughs> airing that. We're going to be airing that here. So turn all your notifications on. Make sure you text Larry Live with no spaces to 33222 so that you can know when I'm live and when I'm airing it live. William Moore Jr., 
Thank you man. so much. Man, for thank you on. so much for the opportunity, my brother. And can you tell mm -hmm. people how to be in, stay in contact with you? Yeah, sure thing. At Willie Moore Jr. Live or Willie Moore Jr. Live dot com. Um, go there. Coming up this week, starting tomorrow, me and my 18-year-old son, we have a mentorship program online that we're starting. We're looking for a thousand young men that we're going to pour into. And so every single month, every single Tuesday, we'll be pouring in a young man ages 12 to 18. Um, everybody from Cantor Simmons, Isaiah Williams, Q Parker from 112, ET to Hip Hop Preacher, and others will get an opportunity to pour into your child. And we're leading up to literally hoping and believing God for the Mercedes Benz Stadium that we're going to yeah. fill it up with young African American males Whoa. coming up in June. And, uh, you know, we're going to have big concerts, basketball stuff, et cetera, et cetera. And so we're about to do something big. So if you got a child who kind of disobedient, um, you noticing that he's ungrateful, he's kind of you losing his drive, or you feel like, dang, I just wish there was some more men that can pour into him. Make sure you log on. Mentor Willie Moore Jr. Live forward slash mentorship. And it's literally going to transform the lives. The Lord put it on my heart to really pour into a young men 12 to 18. And my son is leading the charge. My 18-year-old, wow. he left school with a 3.8 GPA, University of Mississippi. He's on his way. I went to the University of Mississippi. And so, yeah, we're about to pour back into these young men. Bruh, that is dope. I see you're a great father. Man, I love those boys and girls. That is amazing to me. How you can do that coming from where you came, man. That is. And people are donating, so I'll be able to write you, write you a nice check on tonight. Man, <laughs> it's only one place you go and you do an interview and get a check. <laughs> LarryReadLive.com. <laughs> Make sure you log on. <laughs> yeah, we're doing voice oh, oh, As it relates to your, um, your show, when you're doing them battle things with the gospel yeah, artists. Yeah. How, do y'all really let the people choose, or you already have in your mind? Who no, they do? choose. We do it on social media, so we can't we can't fake. We can't do whatever. Big Med chooses the artists. I don't necessarily get involved with the music, and if you hear like hip hop or something that's right. upbeat, that's usually me. Um, but everything else is like Big Med or what have you. And a lot of gospel artists don't necessarily like it because they like to win. Right. But it's just fun. We only got limited slots on radio, so we want to hear what the audience. Who's wants. your favorite gospel artist? Right now, my favorite gospel artist is Joe Kia. Um, she's an amazing artist. Um, she got a song called Yahweh. Um, another amazing artist who I love to life, Jason Nelson. Mm -hmm. Like, I love him. He's His new nice song, guy. Residue. My first interview when I was actually um, trying to get the job interview, or what ha I never had no job in my mm -hmm. life, but I got a chance to interview him. He had no idea who I was, but he was really, really nice. Um, and then, you know, all the new hip hop guys, Bizzle and Lecrae's, and they got this new white guy. His name is Holvey, H U L V E Y. He got this song called Holy Spirit Come Into My Life. It's like he from South Georgia, oh, really? but just a really great guy. So I'm always looking for the up and comings, and of course, the traditional Kirk Franklin's, et cetera, et cetera. I like Kirk. Um, you know, I, I got a few friends in the industry that I really, really love. I think they're great artists, but great people as well. Charles I Jenkins. Want, I don't know if Kirk going to let me do it, but I want to interview him. He will. I'm, he will. But see this thing. You can't ask all that craziness, though. I mean, I ain't going to ask that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, but see, like with Ty Trivet, there was questions that I had to stay around. But I pushed the conversation of where he felt comfortable. He shared stuff, ain't he asked. Yeah. You know, but I would do an interview and be like, don't ask this. Don't ask that. I don't okay. Have, I don't have no problem with that. But... If you if you already got me capped off in them areas, if I go somewhere and ask them, yes, you better ask. <laughs> you know? uh -huh. If you go down that street, yeah. we sticking on that right, street. Exactly. Got it. But I don't want to ask him about the son stuff. I mean, I talked about it up here. I, th I thought both of them was wrong. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and I said it. But the son hit me up like, well, thank you for being honest about it. If you, you saw both of us wrong, whatever. And I've talked to him online on his platform. He come live on IG. But I have never... Um, been disrespectful towards him or his son. Mm -hmm. But some, some people may feel like, you know, if you talk to one, you can't talk to the other. So, but what I want to talk to Kurt about, Kurt is the one that changed gospel music mm -hmm. far as in my generation. Now, the Clark sisters did it, you know, back then, and, and, and Walter Hawkins now with Oh Happy Day. Um, but for us, Stomp, we went straight to hell. Yeah. <laughs> and I was in the club. It influenced me. So See? that's the that's the thing that we that's the song we play after everything. Like to go out, Whoa. we sent people home with Kurt. You see what I'm talking about? That is crazy. Every time I like, cause I did club and parties and all that stuff. Same so, thing with um, Mary Maris. There's another group I want to interview. I really can just interview Erica. I don't know if Tina wanted to even talk to me. But <laughs> what you do to Tina? I just done some jokes on it, but I took him down. 
Yeah, that was t- like four hey, years Tina ago. Tina don't remember that, was, that though. Yeah, Tina don't remember that though. Three or four years oh, ago. Oh, the one thing I like about Tina, if she sees you, she's gonna ask you. If she like you don't have to ask. You don't have to ask her. You know, she ain't gonna do the Christian. Hi, Larry. How you doing? She like we need to talk. Right. <laughs> can we excuse can, hi y'all yeah me uh-huh. and you we but need I to like talk that. I like that cause that's me too right. though. But like, you know, like, I need to holler at you but that is those two Mary and Kurt they changed everything that they am I not, not lying I could play that music for my kids because they liked it and so I but I haven't seen the interviews to me the interviews that they have done haven't been real yeah I want to just have a conversation the way I do my interviews I want to just talk yeah and then whatever come out you know just come out you yeah know? I think you got something special here. Mm-hmm. Um, don't be surprised if 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 I want to set something up like this too. Like to be honest, <laughs> I got you, I got you. you know what I mean. Just for the mm-hmm. for the show. Like I think this is an amazing opportunity. I'd always thought of something like this, but I think like seeing it in its fruition has mm-hmm. literally inspired me to say like, hey man, it's okay to be yourself, and yourself is cool. So I appreciate what you planted in me today to be able yeah. to see you do it on this level. And then, of course, being able to share your audience with me and trusting me with your platform, bro, it means a whole lot. Like, you really inspired me today. Yeah, I, I like you. Um, yeah. There's another studio I built back here that is like this, but it has an audience space. So when we get, and it's just for patrons, all the patrons can come here. It's going to open up in a few months. I got to spend about another $150,000 to finish it. And then there's a recording studio over here. Um, I want to hear some of this. That stuff you were saying earlier. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think nothing wrong with that. You can't do that and the church like you, too. We'll see. We'll see what, what God says. I'm with it. I like it. The word, what was that too, that one you said, um, the one you done a few minutes ago? Did you hear it, Azaria? She can sing. My daughter can sing. What was the name of that one you done? I don't know. Larry, we done talked about so much. You were singing a little piece of it. Yeah, song. man. You know, I was singing all them songs. Lay your body down. Four <laughs> walls, one. good thing. All that. But but I do got an experience that I want to give to like couples soon, so. That's good. But yeah. don't, that, cause that T.D. Jakes one was not right. And I love T.D. Jakes. The lady I love and I love. Bishop Jakes, I didn't say that. Larry I mean, I love, Reed did. I love, Daddy, I love Daddy Jakes. But I'm just saying, who who gonna fuck to that? <laughs> he, put R it, 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 he put an R in it, ladies and gentlemen. He put an R in it, ladies and gentlemen. What is this, what is this, um, this car right here? That's an ace. I'm a Kappa, so I was an ace. Ace Club, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Dude. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah so Cap, Cap out for some. Cap was a pretty boys too. They say, man, you know what? That's what they say. I'm just trying to hold on to handsome. The boys took all that pretty stuff. <laughs> I look at that, all that pretty hair they got and all these little eyes and stuff. I like. Let me hold on to handsome. When you get forty, it's like you know. I'm just yeah. gonna hold on. Okay. All right. So we're out. With more Junior. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. It was a great conversation. It was real. All right. And next week, Michelle Williams. Make sure you sign up to patreon.com backslash Larry Reed Live. Go over there and get the exclusive behind the scenes concerning everything in my personal life and this show. See you later. Bye. Stay connected to Larry Reed Live. Take a moment and like the Facebook page, subscribe to the YouTube page, and hit the bell. Text Larry Reed Live to 33222. That's the words, Larry Reed Live, no spaces, 233222. And get notified when we go live. Become a member of Patreon today by logging on to patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live. Download the Patreon app and turn on your notifications. Get connected today.